Okay, today we're going to look at reaction mechanisms and how they link in with rate expressions. Now, as I've mentioned before, it's not all crash, bang, wallop, everything, all particles collide with each other simultaneously. Most reactions actually consist of a series of separate steps. And these separate steps are known as the reaction mechanism. We'll see more about reaction mechanisms when we do organic chemistry. Each step can actually have its own rate and rate equation and rate, rate constant. So uh, things can get quite complicated, but fortunately not too complicated for us. The overall rate of any multi-step process it's always governed by the slowest step. So it's a little bit like if I want you to pass paper down the bench and somebody is half asleep and takes an age to pass it on to the next person, then the rate of the overall process um, is down to their slowness and not the way you've passed it really quickly on to them. Now the slowest step in a mechanism is called the rate determining step and you'll see that abbreviated as RDS for rate determining step. Now it's fine to use that in your notes and in this sort of presentation but please do not write RDS in any exams. Now only species in or before the rate determining step actually appear in a rate expression. The rate determining step may include a catalyst and often has a high activation energy. I know that's slightly counterintuitive. You might think if you have a catalyst, it will have a low activation energy, but that's not always necessarily the case. It will lower the activation energy use of a catalyst, but still could have a high activation energy. Now you'll see a term used called molecularity. This is used to describe the number of reactant species in a particular mechanism step. So unimolecular means there's one reactant species in the step, bimolecular means two, and you don't really need to know it, but termolecular, T-E-R, followed by molecular, means there are three reactant species in the step. Now think back to the iodine and propanone experiment that you did. What was the rate equation for that? Pause the video, have a look back and see what the rate equation was. Now the rate equation did not have iodine in it. It was R equals H plus in square brackets, propanone in square brackets. So that means only those two substances are involved in the slow step of the mechanism for this reaction. And there is the mechanism, two steps. The first step involves propanone and H plus ions. And you'll see that that is the slow step. So it's only those two things that appear in the rate equation. Iodine comes in and reacts here in the fast step. And as it's the fast step, it has no overall impact on the rate of the reaction. So you need to look at the slow step to determine the rate equation. Okay, and these mechanisms, before you say, oh, well, you said only rate, rate expressions could be determined from experiment. Well, yes, these mechanisms can only be determined by experiment. So it's, it's not a contradiction of what we've said before. So only species in the slow step, or sometimes if there's several steps before the slow step, those involved in the steps before will appear in the rate equation. What I want you to do is you'll have to go on to the presentation that's on 
um, classroom and click these two links for a couple of annoying little quizzes to help you get the idea. Okay, they're annoying because you have to get 10 questions right in a row before it will let you properly finish. Okay, so it will take you some time, don't worry. Have a careful look at each answer and why you've gone wrong. Okay, it will take you a little while to do, perhaps not the whole of the rest of the lesson time, which will be obviously another 50 odd minutes. But so there's also a worksheet to accompany it. Apologies for all the banging and bumping of doors. That's just people finally getting up in Weapon S House this morning.